Hello class and welcome to chapter 22 on cost, volume, and profit. We're going to talk about how we would um, apply costs to our um, product that we are creating based on the variable costs, fixed costs, and then some costs that are part variable and part mixed, and, um, and how we would apply that to the cost of what we are producing. So, um, the first thing we're going to talk about is the difference between variable costs, fixed costs, and mixed costs. Um, so cost behavior analysis is how specific costs respond to changes in what we do. So how many units are we producing? How many hours are people working? That kind of thing. How do our costs change based on that change in activity? Some costs are going to change. Some of them are going to stay totally the same, as I mentioned in today's class. And so when we can plan things out based on the items that change versus the things that change the same, management can plan finances and operations more effectively. Um, every business has certain things that change based on how much activity is going on, um, no matter what type of business or entity it is. And so the big thing that we need to start out with is measuring what are our main uh, business activities that are going on. So our cost behavior analysis is how do these costs respond to changes in, in our activity? Um, we can talk about sales dollars. So how many items are we selling? How many miles are we driving? How many rooms are being used or in our hotel? How many classes are we teaching? Whatever activity or product that we are producing, we just look at how does that change? And then what are the cost drivers that change in relation to that? And some co companies would be looking at a whole, at multiple different measurements. You know, you could be looking at, um, the number of units of clothing that you're selling for various different units. You could be looking at square footage um, in use for a particular store or something along those lines. Now any changes in volume acti of, of the activities that are happening have to be related back to some kind of change in cost. It might even just be the number of hours that employees are working and getting paid for. If you have hourly employees, it could be the ingredients that you put into something that you, that you cook. It could be the raw materials that you're putting into a manufacturing process. Whatever activity, um, or volume you are measuring is going to be called an index, okay? So your activity index identifies what activity changes your costs, okay? And then you can change what is called a variable cost, a fixed cost, or a mixed cost. So what are variable costs? Those are costs that are going to change based directly and proportionally with changes in your activity. So if you increase whatever activity you're measuring 10%, then your variable costs are also going to increase by 10%. If your activity level goes down by 25%, then your variable costs will also go down by 25%. So they remain the same for each measurable unit at every level of activity. So there's not like, um, you know, it doesn't go up 50% with this number of units versus 25% percent at a different number of units. It just goes up. For every unit, it increases a, a, a specific amount that is the same for each unit. Let's say we've got Damon Company. They manufacture tablets that have cameras that cost $10, all right? So for every tablet that you produce, the cost of the cameras goes up by $10, right? So um, if we have cameras that cost $20,000, that would be 2,000 units at $10 each. If we produce 2,000 tablets and $100,000 uh, would be the cost if we produce 10,000 tablets, all right? So $10 for each tablet. We can see that the variable cost is gonna be exactly the same per unit in this particular case, $10 per unit. Now, um, If we look at something, um, so we've got Damon Corporation, again, making cameras that cost $10, and the activity index is the number of ta tablet computers that are produced. So the total cost of cameras increases by $10, all right? So this just shows the cost per unit is flat. It stays the same regardless of how many units that we are producing, the cost per camera. 
Okay, so our total variable costs go up in a straight measurable line. The variable cost per unit stays flat. So this is our, our summary for variable costs here. So the total dollar costs versus the cost per unit. Now, what are fixed costs? Those costs remain the same no matter what kind of changes in activity level we have within our measurable range that we're looking at. Okay, so our fixed cost per unit um, is gonna vary inversely, it goes the opposite direction of activity. So we've got the same pool of costs. Let's say it's $100,000. That $100,000 will get divided out by 10 units if we only produce 10 units, which would be $10,000 a unit. If we produce 100,000 units, then it's a dollar per unit. But either way, we still have the same um, dollar amount of costs, okay? So things like property taxes, salaries for supervisors, um, insurance, rent, depreciation on your buildings, those don't change based on how much activity is going on. They're flat amounts, okay? So the total fixed costs here, remember our total variable costs went up like this, our total fixed cost stays flat. In this case, it's rent expense. The rent doesn't go up if we're super busy. It doesn't go down if we're super slow. It just stays flat. Now, the fixed cost per unit is kind of a curve though, all right? Because the more units we have, the more we can divide that rent out into smaller amounts per unit. And so um, the dollar amount per tablet computer for these cameras, for example, um, if we are looking at rent expense, the rent per unit goes dramatically down the more units that we are able to produce during that time. So we had $5 per unit if we produced um, 2,000 units, but we only had a dollar per unit if we produced um, 10,000 units. So total costs stay the same, but the cost per unit goes down the more units that we produce. All right, so looking at this, which one of these refers to variable costs, all right? We've got, either, is it A, they vary in total directly and proportionately with changes in the activity level? Um, is it B, they remain the same per unit at every activity level? Is it C, neither of the above, or is it D, both A and B above? Think about this for a second. Um, if you think about it, both A and B are saying the same thing, essentially. Um, the costs remain the same per unit at every activity level, and they vary directly and proportionately with changes in the activity level. All right, so we've mentioned a couple times in here our relevant range. So what does that mean exactly, our relevant range? Well, throughout all of the possible ranges of our activity, um, a straight line uh, relationship doesn't generally exist for either the variable costs or the fixed costs. Um, and that's because you have what is, uh, you have areas of your operations where you're more efficient and where you're less efficient, right? So um, we actually tend to have like what's called a curvilinear relationship. And we'll look at a picture of this. For fixed costs, um, we don't typically also have a linear relationship either. Some fixed costs are not going to change at all, while other fixed costs might change at certain points in time, okay? Like you might have a, have a jump, okay? So our variable costs here, um, they go up very steeply at the very low levels, and then they go up very steeply again at the very high levels and they have kind of a linear one everywhere in between. And why is that, okay? That's because if you purchase a teeny tiny amount of something or you produce a teeny tiny amount of something, you have to like, you have to buy everything to start it up, right? And if you are producing the absolute max amount that you can produce of something, you're gonna use up every last little bit of your resources and it gets a lot harder to do that. Think about running, all right? Like starting from a complete halt um, to like speed walking is a lot of work and then sprinting all out at the top of your range is a lot of work. If you find that middle range, you can kind of jog forever and you have just like um, a certain 
you know, relatively straight amount of effort that has to be put out. It's the same thing for manufacturing, all right? Starting from nothing is harder and then doing your absolute max capacity is harder, but you can have a pretty predictable range of growth for your variable costs in between there, just from an efficiency standpoint. And then your fixed costs, you know, again, at zero level, you're gonna have nothing um, that's gonna be, you might be able to get away with um, avoiding certain costs if you have a zero activity level, whereas if you have a moderate activity level, you might be in this mid-range for fixed costs. If you're maxing out, you might have to rent additional stuff, right? So like maybe there's additional buildings or space required in order to max out your capacity, or maybe you have a, have a have loss of alternate usage of particular assets if you are operating at your top range. So that's why we have these stepped fixed costs here. Now, um, so your relevant range that we're going to be looking at most of the time when we're talking about this is that kind of mid range of opportunity of activity where we're operating in our peak level of efficiency, um, which is a generally average range. Okay, so we tend to look at that middle range and call and that's our relevant range that we're looking at. So um, your relevant range is what? A, your range of activity in which variable costs will be curvilinear. B, the range of activity in which fixed costs will be curvilinear. C, the range over which the company expects to operate during a year. Or D, usually, usually from zero to 100% of capacity. Well, it's going to end up being C, the range over which we expect to operate during the year. Okay, when it's curvilinear is the entire range. Um, so moving on to our next section here, we're going to talk about what are mixed costs. Well, some costs have a little bit of a variable element and a little bit of a fixed element. So they can change in total, but not necessarily proportionally with changes in activity. Um, so we have then a base level, which is our fixed cost element that will be incorporated into a particular cost. And then beyond that base cost of just getting out there, we have a variable cost element. So some of the costs that we might look at here, um, overall for a company, we're going to talk about which ones would be fixed, which ones would be variable, and then um, which ones would be mixed, all right? So we've got direct materials um, that are $20,000 for 10 units and $40,000 uh, 40, for um, 20,000 units. So what would that end up being? Um, that one is gonna end up being a variable cost because it's the same proportion between 10,000 units and 20,000 units. It's like $2 per unit, all right? Um, our maintenance, we go from 8,000 for 10,000 units versus $10,000 for 20,000 units. So it's not the same proportion, but it does go up with more units. So that tells us that it's mixed, all right? Direct labor, $17,000 for 10 units, twice as much for 20,000 units. So that would be variable. Indirect materials, and I know I have the answer over here, but I'm explaining the rationale at how we arrived at each of these, okay? So $1,000 of indirect materials for 10,000 units for twice as many units, it's $2,000. Same proportion, variable. Depreciation, $4,000 for 10,000 units, $4,000 for 20,000 units. No change, that makes it fixed. Utilities, $3,000 for 10,000 units, $5,000 for 20,000 units. It's not twice as much, but it does go up, so that would be a mixed. Um, and then finally, we have rent, $6,000 for 10,000 units versus $6,000 for 20,000 units. That's a fixed expense then, because it's the same either way. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how do we determine what the components are for those mixed costs, because that was the most complex one. If it's direct relationship, it's pretty easy to see, but when you get to those mixed costs, it gets a little bit fuzzier. So we're gonna talk about how we could classify that out, all right? Um, we have a method, um, we have to break out those mixed costs between their fixed and their variable elements. What part is fixed? What part is variable? So we use what's called a high-low method. So that takes our total costs that are incurred at high and low levels of activity 
and then it fix and then it breaks that out into fixed versus variable. And so the difference in costs between the high and low levels represent variable costs because only variable cost element can change as the activity levels change. All right. So if we're going to map that out, we've got our change in our total costs at high activity versus low activity. So high activity cost minus low activity cost. We're going to divide that by the high minus low activity level, and that gives us a variable cost per unit. So let's look at that with some actual math here, all right, because that's a little bit abstract. So uh, Metro Transit has the following maintenance costs and mileage data for its fleet buses over a six month period, all right? So in January, they drove 20,000 miles with a cost of $30,000. Um, the miles driven um, in April was 50,000 miles with a total cost of $63,000. So what do we do here? We take the change in costs between the two periods, right? So $63,000 here minus the $30,000 change of $33,000. And then we take um, the high minus the low activity, okay? So 50,000 miles minus 20,000 miles. That's a uh, change in miles of 30,000 miles, all right? Now we just take that $33,000 change in costs and we divide it by the change in miles of 30,000 units, and that's going to give us the cost per additional mile in that range between 30, uh, or I'm sorry, 20,000 and 50,000 miles. Okay, so what is the total fixed cost for Metro Transit then? Um, we're going to take our total variable cost at the higher low activity level and then um, we're looking at fixed costs then of $8,000 because we had $63,000 minus our um, $30,000 and then we take our 50,000 miles times the $1.10 we take the 20,000 miles times the dollar 10, and then we look at what is the difference there. We had a flat difference of 8,000, okay? So 63 minus the $55,000 variable costs gave us fixed costs of 8,000. 30,000 minus the variable costs of 22,000 is 8,000. All right, our maintenance costs then our base cost that is going to stay the same no matter how many miles we end up driving is eight thousand dollars per month and then we add in the dollar uh so the fixed cost of eight thousand plus the dollar ten per mile of variable costs so that gives us a formula of eight thousand plus 1.1 times the miles So if we look at this for an example of 45,000 miles, we're going to take $8,000 plus $1.10 times 45,000 or 45,000 miles to give us costs of $49,500, total $57,500. And here's a, a graph of some examples of this, all right? So we calculated out for this relevant range between 20,000 miles and 50,000 miles. And then we created a straight line cost driver in between the two. Okay, so mixed costs consist of what? A, a variable cost element and a fixed cost element. B, a fixed cost element and a controllable cost element. C, relevant cost element and a controllable cost element. Or D, variable cost element and a relevant cost element. Well, um, some of these are not even terms that we that we have talked about, but what we did talk about was a variable cost element and the fixed cost element. That's what goes into your mixed costs. So why is it important to segregate those out? Because if you don't, then you and you take that entire cost and divide it out into um, the miles for that period, then you're going to end up overstating your fixed costs. Um, so uh, looking at an example, if American Airlines is to make a profit when it reduces all domestic fares by 30%, what reduction in costs or increase in passengers will be required? To make a profit, it will have to increase the number of passengers or cut its variable costs for those flights because the fixed costs will not change. Even if they don't fly the planes, they still have to pay for the planes, right? So um, 
looking at another example, if Ford Motor Company meets workers' demands for higher wages, what increase in sales revenue will be needed to maintain current profit levels? Well, higher wages will increase the cost for manufacturing more cars. Um, so to maintain their present profit levels, they'd have to cut some of their other variable costs or some of their fixed costs, or they'd have to sell more automobiles or increase the price of their automobiles. Okay, so here's an example for you to walk through. This is out in the slides. I want you to kind of take a look at this. Um, and it's and it's just a high low method example and it, this walks through all the steps on here for you. But basically you're going to want to pick a couple months and you're going to want to look at what is the change in units versus what is the change in total cost. And then you're going to take the change in total cost and you're going to divide it out by the change in total units to figure out what the variable cost is per unit. All right. So sit down and walk through this, um, pause the video and think about that based on what we've already done. I'm gonna click forward here so you can see what the answer is. The slides will also be out um, in the, um, in Blackboard for you to review for chapter 22. But basically what you're gonna end up with is if you were to take your, uh, go from May to March, take your total costs for May, subtract your total costs for March, then divide that by the total units for May minus the total units for March, and that's gonna give you a $1.30 cost, variable cost per unit. So then if you take your um, cost for just the month of March, $14,740, and you subtract it, the variable cost, which is that $1.30 per unit times the 9,800 units, that will give you a fixed cost of $2,000. And if you did it right, you should get something close or the same for um, multiple months as you're doing this calculation. Okay, I am going to um, wrap this up on this, and this will hopefully get you started on looking at some of the materials for um, chapter 22. Actually, let me just glance through and see how long this next section is. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pause on this, and then I will have some more videos for you on Wednesday.